I was thinking about what to do today and I kept going back to that Windows 95 screensaver that walked through a randomly generated maze. Now I could always just generate enough of a hallway for a quick trip through with a camera and that would be like day complete. You know, so that idea was kind of bubbling in the background, but my mind was stuck on something else. I was thinking, since we have simulation zones now, we can kind of iterate over the scene. It should be possible to represent a cellular automata algorithm inside of Geonodes now. So I set to work. I found this great video by a channel named Stoat Pause. He has a few videos about procedural generation using both Python and geometry nodes. And oh look, a maze. Well, that would be nice. But for the sake of simplicity and my schedule and my own sanity, I chose this cave generation model. This video is really a godsend because he's using Python in Blender to do this, and that means that he's using API calls, and those were a great hint to me when I was trying to find the exact nodes to use. So again, stoat pause. He deserves a major thanks, and uh, he deserves some views. For anyone who just has no idea what I'm talking about, here's a three-step process for what we're trying to achieve. We want to generate a 2D field of cells and we're gonna fill those cells with a random value of either being a wall or a walkable surface, like a floor. Or in other words, not a wall. Then we iterate over this set of cells with a rule set that can change the status of the grid. Just to explain here, the idea is that with a judicious rule set, you can generate something that is like close to a cave system that's entirely walkable, or at least it could be made entirely walkable with minimal correction. And then finally, we use the status of the cells to build a mesh. Now steps one and three are easy. They're like the easiest things I've ever done in my life. Step two is a flying spaghetti monster. I have lied to you. I hope you got your running shoes on. Let's first look at a bit of his video where he's laid out his code, and I'll do my best to explain how we're gonna convert everything over to Geonodes. Our equivalent of a loop in this case is the timeline, so we don't create an iterator. A mesh is pulled in from the scene here, we'll generate ours with nodes. But then, importantly, down here, we assign a random Boolean value to each vertex. Let's get everything so far into nodes. We'll add a grid and then store named attribute as a Boolean, and name it is wall where we assign a random value. In the code, now we're looping, so we add a simulation zone, and inside of here we're doing a lot of stuff. For every vertex, we find all of its neighbors. This is a very important hint. We set this wall neighbors value to zero, and then check on the neighbors to see if they're a wall or not. If they are, then one gets added to wall neighbors. After that, he defines some rules, and I'll be using the same ones. And then we apply those changes to the state of the grid. Back to nodes store named attribute for neighbor walls and we'll set it to zero and this we want to be an integer and then later we're going to store it again and you can imagine that there is some stuff that happens over here that makes the decisions after that we set the new values for is wall based on those previously stated rules the edges of vertex node has a total value remember our hint well, there's one of our rules, but we'll need to store two values, one for false and one for true. So I can copy this down and just change this to greater than. And there we go. And then if it's exactly two, we'll make no changes, so there are no additions there. Then our simulation is done and we can move on to rendering. I'm just going to instance cubes since that's really easy. Selection is based on is wall. And then way back at the beginning, I'm going to do something a little bit fancy here to make sure that everything ends up even. The cubes are one meter, so the size should always be one less than the number of vertices. At least in this example. Alright, so you remember that magical stuff that updates our neighbor walls right here? That stuff is actually a flying spaghetti monster. I'm sorry, I've lied to you. I'm sorry, this is the last time. I'm gonna do my best here, but this is the hard part. If you've made it this far, you've done well. Pat yourself on the back. And then, pat that like- We have these two nodes. Now he has this API call, other vert. We don't have that for mysterious reasons, so we're gonna have to do some finagling. For each ID, we can get an edge index. And we have a sort index here that flips through all the connected edges. 
We won't have any vertices that are connected to more than four edges, so 0, 1, 2, and 3 are our indices. We're working on 0 now. We use an evaluate at index node set to the edge domain to get the vertex index on one end of that edge. Now, if the result of that is not equal to the ID of the vert we're on, and if that other vert is a wall, then we can pass a value of one along to our wall neighbors variable. We can duplicate a lot of this down and do the same thing for index two. Combining these, we have a decision tree for the zeroth edge. Duplicate all of this down and change the sort index to one for the second connected edge. Now at the end, since Boolean values are a value of one, we can add the results to accumulate a total for wall neighbors. Two is the most edges we're guaranteed to have, so we'll have to do more stuff at the end to guarantee that we don't have repeat values, but duplicate all of this again, and remember to change the sort index to two and three for the remaining branches. Over here, remember edges of vertex has a total output, and we can just compare that and check that our total edges are greater than two or three, and then we only output a true result if both of these conditions are true. Accumulate everything up, and we've successfully updated our values. Now, since all of this is downstream of a simulation zone, this is all going to take previous results into account. We should be good to go here. Dude, this software is whack. Oh my gosh. We did it. I took yesterday off because I, uh, I had today off work and I was just like, I just kind of need to rest up, you know, but we woke up and worked on the deck for a little while today. And then eventually I was just like, I'm sorry, I gotta go. I gotta get started on stuff, you know? And then I chose to implement 2D cellular automata in Blender Geonodes. Why would I do that? Who does that? So this was all crazy and it all came together in like the last eight hours. And you might be asking yourself, Alan, what does any of this have to do with museum? Nothing. Maybe this deserves like um, a better video that isn't on such a tight deadline. Let me know.